Father, we thank you for this day of worship. We thank you for all the people who are here, our members and our friends and our neighbors who are here. We're asking, O oh Lord, you speak your word to everyone today in Jesus' name. I will pray that this word will do us good. Every word, every promise, every pronouncement, every sentence we read will penetrate every heart and drive us to you in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verses 1, 2, 3, and 4. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we shall let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his will. I'm going to read verse 3 again. The first part of verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? And as you think about yourself today, you think about time, you think about eternity, you think about the opportunities you have, you think about the great privilege we have in hearing the word of God every time. And we think of the way of salvation that is made plain, made clear to everyone. And as we're going to hear once again today, the word of salvation, the plan of salvation, and the promise of salvation, and the provision of salvation made by the Lord Jesus Christ. It says it's possible to neglect. There are those who reject outright. There are those who disagree outright. There are those who spawn outright. There are those who scoff. There are those who scorn the way of salvation, the plan of salvation, the promise of salvation, and the provision of salvation. But there are those who don't really reject. They don't scoff. They don't scorn. They don't outrightly disagree. But they neglect and to such people whether they are in or out whether they have believed before they have not believed before it says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation you make it personal you are asking yourself as you think about eternity as you think about what lies beyond the grave and there's going to be judgment after we die. Because it's appointed unto man wants to die. And after this, the judgment is asking you, how will you escape? If you neglect so great salvation. And it talks about that salvation. It says, as you look at verse 3 there, it says, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord. It's telling us that this is not afterthought. This is not something somebody just dreamt about. It says, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, he first spoke about this salvation so clear, so plain. His spirit in the prophets of the Old Testament had been talking about this salvation. But when he came himself, he made it very clear, made it very plain, as the greatest gift the heavenly father has offered us and he says it was spoken first by the lord and then it was confirmed unto us by all those who have heard him that he is all the apostles that followed after 
all the preachers that followed after. And after the time of those apostles, all the preachers that have followed after, they have confirmed their salvation, the great salvation, the gracious salvation, the glorious salvation, they have confirmed each unto us. And he's saying, not only that, even the Spirit of God, by signs and wonders, by miracles of healing, by miracles of deliverance, he confirmed thee to everyone. And he says then, if this word, the word of salvation, he says then, if this provision, the provision of salvation, he says then, if this promise of salvation made available to everyone, if you neglect, if we neglect, if he neglects, if she then neglects, how shall we escape? It begins the chapter by the word, therefore. Look at it again. I'm reading from chapter 2, verse 1. It says, therefore, we ought to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard. It says, therefore, what is that therefore? What does it mean? He'll be talking about the Lord Jesus Christ in chapter 1. And he talks about Jesus, the exalted dignity of Christ, the power of Christ, the provision of Christ, the preeminence of Christ, and the perfection of Christ. It says, if Christ is exalted, therefore, Give the more honesty. If Christ is greater than all men put together, if Christ is greater than all angels put together, if Christ is exalted, if Christ is eternal, it says, therefore, well, to give the more honest heed, if he has made provision for us, if he has loved us so much, that he suffered so much, and he gave so much for us, it says, Therefore, we ought to give the more honesty if his position now is high above all the angels of heaven and is seated on the right hand of God in majesty. He says, therefore, because of that exaltation, because you'll never have any greater person any greater prophet, any greater preacher, any greater provider, you'll never have any greater person declaring anything to you. Therefore, it says, therefore, we ought to give them more honesty. It says, this is the preeminent one. It's a glorious one. It's a great one. It says, therefore, because of that, we ought to give them more honest heed to the things which we have heard. Actually, Paul, the apostle, the writer to the Hebrews, he, he would uh, give us some exhortation. He'll give us some explanation. He'll give us some encouragement. And then after that encouragement, after the revelation, he'll say, therefore, he said, hear what I've said. Hear what I've told you. And because of this, therefore, here is what you do. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. He spoke about the promise of God, the promise of eternal life. He spoke about the promise of God, the promise of deliverance from sin. He spoke about the promise of God, the promise of the privilege of getting to God in heaven. And he says, therefore, 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 let us fear, lest he promise been left us of entering in, into that trace. Let's send you a few come short of that provision. Look at verse 6 there, chapter 4, verse 6. It says, seeing therefore, it remained that both, it remained that some must enter in. Thank God I will enter in. Somebody there said, thank God I will enter in. But he says, seeing therefore some must enter in therein. And they to whom it was so preached entered not in because of unbelief. Unbelief made them to neglect, made them to reject, made them to spawn the promise of God. He says, now look at verse 11, let us labor therefore. It says, others have missed it. I will not miss it. 
Others did not get it. I will get it. Others that could have been saved, they were not saved. The privilege was theirs. The opportunity was theirs. And the provision of salvation was theirs. And they missed it. I will not miss it. It says, if you are not going to miss it, look at verse 11. Therefore, 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 let us labor to enter into that rest. Lest any of, lest any fall after the same manner of unbelief. It tells us in verse 16 of that same chapter 4. It says, let us therefore. You see that? It's saying you have something to do. There are people that think about the sovereignty of God. God is all in all and God has given salvation. God wants me to receive. It is not the will of God that anybody should perish. Oh yes, but you have a part to play. There is God's sovereignty and there is human responsibility. You must take the step. That's why it's saying Let's rise up. Let's do something. Let's get it. Let's believe it. Let's receive it. Look at that verse 16. Let us therefore come how? Boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We're coming to chapter 10. All the apostles are reminding us if the provision is there, therefore do something about that. If the privilege is there, therefore get up and do something about that. If the opportunity is there, therefore get up and believe the Lord and get something done. And the provision will be yours in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen there. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19. Having therefore, that's the word again. You see, he's been talking about the sacrifices in chapter 8, chapter 9, and chapter 10. He talked about the sacrifice of Jesus. And he said, Jesus is the final sacrifice. He says, Jesus is our Savior. He says, Jesus is the final substitute. He's the one that has made provision for your forgiveness, and for your salvation, and for your eternal life. And now he says, in verse 19, Therefore, having brethren boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood, of Jesus by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and having an high priest over the house of God. Look at this again look at this. Let us draw near. You know every time he gives us a revelation of the savior, of the sacrifice of the substitute, of the sin bearer. Every time he tells us there's a promise for you there's a provision for you. Every time he tells us, there's a pronouncement for you. And you can be free. Then he calls upon us. He says, don't just fold your hand and sit back and relax and close your eyes and close your lips. And says, okay, if he wants to do it, let him do it. He says, you have something to do. And he says, therefore, let us draw near with a true heart. In full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Verse 23, let us hold fast. Don't just say, God has promised, God will save, and God will bless, and God will heal, and God will deliver. And because God will do this, okay, let him do it. It says, hold it, hold it fast. The promise of God. Hold it fast. The provision of God, hold it fast. You hold it fast. Nobody will take this from you. Nobody will snatch this from you. It says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Look at verse 35. In verse 35, cast not away therefore. That's the word again. It says, you have a hope of heaven. Don't cast that away. Times of trial, when you come at a crossroad, when you come with challenges to challenges, it says, cast not away therefore your confidence which has great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, endurance, perseverance, holding on until behind thee. What does that mean? You know, Lord had settled there the while you have it. You have need of importunity. Not giving up, 
But holding on until you have, it says, we have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise for yet a little while, and he that shall come, will come. I will not tarry. Yet a little while, the Savior who is coming to you, he will come, he will not tarry. Yet a little while, Christ the healer who is coming to you, he will come, he will not tarry. I was waiting for a good day, amen. It says, yet a little while, the one who is coming again to take the saints away. Because there's going to be a rapture. There's going to be a resurrection. There's going to be the coming of the Lord. And he's coming for the, his own. He's coming for the saints. And yet, a little while, he that shall come will come. And will not tarry now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, somebody there, if any man draw back, Who's the backslider there? If any man draw back, who wants to draw back there? If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back. Temptation might come, I will not draw back. Persecution might come, I will not draw back. Say it for yourself. I said say it for yourself. Friends may become enemies, I will not draw back. And there may be kind of challenges, challenges that may come. It comes sometimes in your personal life, sometimes in your professional life, sometimes in the place of work, persecution, trial, temptation, whatever. It says, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe unto the saving of the soul. Your soul will be saved. Your life will be redeemed. He'll prepare you for everlasting life in Jesus' name. Hey, come on now. Look at chapter 13. Chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 12. Wherefore, Jesus also, that ye might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate, outside the gate. It says, let us go forth, therefore. Underline that word, therefore. There you see that. It's like Jesus Christ he has suffered for sanctification. He paid the price for sanctification. He shed his blood for sanctification and for holiness. Holiness of heart. Holiness in the mind. Holiness in the thought. Holiness in the private. Holiness in the public. Holiness through and through. And because he's done that, he said, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. He's telling us that Christ Jesus has provided for the remission of our sin, for the forgiveness of our sin, and for the purging of our sin, and for the forgiveness and for the freedom from all sin. And he says, because of that, because of that provision of the Lord, Therefore, we ought to give them all honesty to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time we shall let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression, every sin, every rebellion, every iniquity, and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, it says, how shall we escape? Thank God today you will escape in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you on our glorious escape through the great salvation. That's the only way. That's the only way to escape. To escape eternal suffering. To escape punishment in hell. To escape the judgment of God. To escape an eternity of sorrow. Eternity of suffering. Eternity of pain. Eternity of anguish to escape the judgment of God. The only way is to have this great salvation. And it says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? That's why we're talking to you on the glorious escape. Somebody there, I will escape. I'm looking for him there. I'm looking for her there. Our glorious escape through the great salvation. Somebody say the great salvation. I can't hear my people. The great salvation will possess it. Will preserve it. 
will live by it in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at as we look at those verses of scripture. Number one, a necessary exhortation to earnest steadfastness. A necessary exhortation. Paul, the apostle, found this necessary. The Holy Ghost found this necessary that he will tell you and tell me a necessary exhortation to earnest steadfastness. Point number two, the neglected escape from endless suffering. The neglected escape. The way of escape was there. The plan of escape is there. The promise of escape is there. And the one that came to open the door so we can escape eternal suffering, everlasting suffering, endless suffering, the person has opened the door and it is the glorious escape but those who neglect, those who neglect, they will suffer forever and ever. Point number two, the neglected escape from endless suffering. Point number three, the normal evidence of eternal salvation. The normal evidence of eternal salvation. When somebody has salvation, there's an evidence. When somebody experiences salvation, there's an evidence. When somebody has gone in into the salvation of the Lord, provided by the Lord, given by the Lord, he turns away from sin, he believes of the Lord Jesus Christ, and their salvation, planned from all eternity, and provided from all eternity, their salvation, provided for everyone, is available. There is an evidence when you get that, and thank God you'll have it in Jesus' name. Did I hear your amen? amen? We're coming back to number one. Number one. Tell me number one over there. Tell me out loud. Let your neighbor hear. A necessary exhortation to earnest steadfastness. Come back to Hebrews chapter 2. And I'm reading here from verse 1. It says, therefore... Therefore, because of the exhortation of Christ, therefore, because of the preeminence of Christ, therefore, because of the power of Christ, therefore, because of the suffering of Christ on the cross of Calvary, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. Therefore, you see, that word therefore means that you have no reason to neglect and you have no reason to reject. It says in First Peter chapter 4, First Peter chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 7. It says the end of all things is at hand. Look at all the signs around you. Look at all the things happening. And look at the calamities all over the world. And it shows you that the world is coming to an end. All the things are running after. I must have this. I must have that. I must build that. I must raise that. I must possess that. I must buy that. Everything is going to be destroyed. Because the end of the world is coming. The things that look important to you. Material things. They are coming to an end. The things that look important to you. If I don't have this. I cannot do any other sin. If I don't possess this, I cannot have any other sin. It says, the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, be thoughtful, be sober, be earnest, and be diligent because all these things are going to be forgotten. Therefore, be sober and watch unto prayer. It tells us in verse 17 of that same chapter 4. It says, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? And if the righteous constantly be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? That's the reason he's saying, therefore, be earnest. Therefore, be diligent. Therefore, make sure you come into the grace of God. And therefore, because the time is at hand, make sure that you are the grace of God and you are steadfast in the grace of God. You remain in the grace of God. 
You abide in the grace of God. It tells us in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. Ye therefore, you see that word, that word, therefore again, ye therefore, beloved, seen, ye know these things before. Beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. You know, sometimes you see people who are wicked and they're getting a lot of money. People who are wicked, they're getting land. People who are wicked, they're building houses. People who are wicked, they're getting certificates. People who are wicked, you see, they're not right. They're righteous. They're sinful people. And they're getting the things of this world. It says, don't be led away by the error of the wicked. Whatever they get, whatever they have, whatever they possess, it says you. You understand the world is coming to an end. You understand all all these things are going to become useless eventually. You understand what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul? It says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also be led astray, or the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. You will not fall. I will not fall. I said for myself, I said, I will not fall. I will not leave my place of diligence, earnestness, steadfastness, because I know all through these many years, we have come into the grace of God. We have come to the salvation of the Lord. And now it's about time that we cross over to the great beyond. This is the time to stand firm. You will not look back in Jesus' name. It tells us in Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. It says, remember, therefore. You see that, therefore. It says, you know, we're liable to forget. We have the tendency of forgetting. You know, at the time, maybe you've just married. You forget all the teachings of the word of God. Maybe you've just got a child. You forget all the teachings of the word of God. Maybe you've just got a job. Maybe you've just got a certificate. Maybe you've got, some, got something, you know, and the joy of what you have got gets into your brain. And then you forget every other thing. It says, remember, remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent if therefore thou shalt not watch I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee I pray you are going to watch I pray you are going to be earnest I pray you will not be lukewarm in Jesus name we're coming back to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. It says, therefore, therefore, because of Christ exalted, therefore, because of Christ who is preeminent, therefore, because of Christ who is powerful, therefore, because of Christ who is our Savior and has given everything for salvation. It says, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard. We ought to give proper attention. That's what he's saying. We ought to give prompt obedience. That's what he's saying. We ought to give constant thoughtfulness. Thoughtfulness. Don't behave like somebody that knows nothing. Knows nothing about the Bible. Knows nothing about salvation. Knows nothing about sanctification. Knows nothing about holiness. Knows nothing about doctrine. Knows nothing about heaven. Don't behave like somebody that knows nothing about hell. He says, Give constant thoughtfulness and personal meditation of wavering faith to what we have heard, to what we have read in the Bible, to what we have witnessed to other people, to what we have learned, to what we have believed, to what we have taught ourselves, and to what we are preaching. Give earnest attention and give complete consideration to the word of God. Have you heard about repentance? You ought to give the more honest seed after your heart. Have you heard about faith in Christ? You ought to give the more honest seed. Have you heard about salvation? There's no salvation any other place but in the Lord Jesus Christ only. You ought to give the more honest uh, heed and the more honest attention to what you are hearing. Have you heard about holiness? Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord every time, everywhere in your life. You ought to give the more honest seed to the things that you have heard. Have you heard about separating yourself? 
yourself from every sinner, that you'll not compromise, that you'll make up your mind that even if you have to stand alone, you will stand for righteousness. It says, that thing you have heard is very important. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, of what you heard. Therefore, we ought to give them more honesty to the things which we have heard. And then it says, less at any time. Lest at any time we should let them sleep away from us. It's saying that lest at any time we become indifferent. Lest at any time we become dull of mind. Lest at any time we become cold. Lest at any time we become lukewarm. Lest at any time we become disinterested. Salvation, mm -mm, I don't want to hear about that. I'm looking for healing now. Holiness, I don't want to hear about that. I'm looking for a job now and then get into heaven. No, no, I don't want to hear about heaven now. I'm looking for how to get something here done on earth. It says, lest you become disinterested and lest you become diverted by the cares of this life. Look at that again. It says, lest at any time. What does that mean? At any time. It's talking about times of prosperity. You know, sometimes money makes people to forget the essential thing. And times of celebration. You are celebrating something now and people forget everything they have ever known. Everything they have ever had. It says less at any time. Time of adversity. Sometimes there's sickness and sometimes there's oppression. Sometimes there's attack. And sometimes it looks like the whole pressure of the world is upon your life. Less at that time, you know, people are going to be seeking occultic solution an idolatrous solution, traditional solution, they are forgotten that if they give their lives to Satan, they're going to perish. If you die in that condition, it will be hell forever. That's why it says less at any time, at all times, in all places, in every situation of life, we should give the truth of Christ more importance than any other concern or situation or instruction in life. It says, any time, whatever time that may be, we're not going to let the word of God slip away from us. And the word of God will not slip away from you in Jesus' name. Are you tired of amen? In times of temptation, temptation will come. In times of trial, trials will come. In times of persecution, persecution will come. In times of sickness, sickness may come. In times of spiritual warfare, in times of departure from this world. You know, one day will come that we will leave the world. Even if you live as long as Methuselah, you will leave this world one day. And that day of departure from the earth, that day of death, that day of departure from everything we see around here, lest at any time, in the time of death in particular, lest we let the watch of faith the word of salvation and the word of confidence in God and the desire to get to heaven, lest we let it sleep away from us. You look at that verse in verse 1, it says, lest at any time we should let them sleep. What does that mean? Lest at any time we should let them run out as from a leaking vessel. There are some people, their brains leak. There are some people, their minds leak. There are some people, their memory leaks. And it says, lest at any time we should let this sleep out of us as a leaking vessel. Leak out of our mind. Sleep out of our memory. Lest we forget what we have heard at the time we need them most. I pray you will not forget. I said, I pray you will not forget. He wants us to remember every time he tells us in Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 13. Proverbs chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 13. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 13. Look at what the word of God is telling us. It says in verse 13. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her for she is thy life. What you are hearing in the preaching of the word of God, what you have heard already at the time of the retreat, at the time of the congress, and all the Bible studies we are hearing, all the Tons of Miracle and Revival messages we are hearing, all the Saturday workers meeting, uh, training uh, sessions we are hearing, it says, hold fast. 
Don't allow that to slip away from you. Because it tells us in verse 20, that same chapter 4, verse 20, it tells us, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life to those that find them. It's your life. It's your very life. This is what, what will give you eternal life, everlasting life, and health to all their flesh. You'll not give it up. You'll not let it go. You'll not let it slip away from you in Jesus' name. We're looking at Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. Here are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, Have you heard? Hold fast. Have you heard? Hold on to it. Have you received it? Make sure you keep it. This word, I pray the word will benefit us. And the word will perfect us in Jesus' name. We're looking at Luke chapter 21 and verse 34. It says in verse 34, take heed to yourselves. You see that? There's the Lord Jesus says, take heed unto yourselves. What you are hearing, don't let, uh, you know, your mind be like a basket that will pour the water and the water never stays. I will pour the great, uh, you know, cleansing liquid and it never cleanses you. It says, take heed to yourselves. Let's at any time, that's the word again. Let's at any time, that's the word again. Let's at any time, your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the old earth. Watch ye therefore. That's the word therefore. Watch ye therefore. Dangerous times are coming. Watch ye therefore. Pray, those times are coming. Watch ye therefore. And the time of calamity, tribulation is coming upon the whole world. Watch ye therefore. And pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man i pray you all stand i said i pray you all stand and it says lest at any time you allow the thing to slip away from you proverbs chapter 23 i'm reading from verse 23 proverbs chapter 23 reading from verse 23 buy the truth and sell it not with your repentance, buy the truth and sell it not. With your faith in Christ, get the truth and sell it not. And with consecration, with dedication, and with perseverance, and with uh, uncompromising stand for the Lord all the days of your life, buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding, and don't give up on them. If you don't give up the truth, the truth will not give you up. The Lord will not give you up. And the salvation of the Lord will be permanent in your life in Jesus' name. I was waiting for a good amen from the church. I'm coming back to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verses 2 and 3. Hebrews chapter 2. We're looking from verses 2 and 3. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast. And every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. How? Shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Point number two, the neglected escape from endless suffering. The neglected escape from endless suffering. Look at what it says there. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? He said, if the watch of angels, angels came from heaven and he came to Sodom and he told the Lord to go and tell his people and to go and tell those who married his daughters saying the end is coming for Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, get you out of this place. Destruction is coming. Judgment is coming. Eternal suffering is coming. 
But those people, they neglected. Look at the story. We're looking at uh, Genesis chapter 19. Angels came and they spoke the word. And the people who neglected, and the people who refused, and the people who made fun of that word, and the people who just uh, felt, uh, you know, that's nothing. I have my life to live. Don't bother me. And I want to enjoy this, enjoy that. Don't bother me. I can't think of repentance now. I can't think of coming out of Sodom now. I can't think of salvation now. I can't think of going to the mountain and leaving escaping for the mountain now. I want to enjoy what I've got. And they neglected the word of God. I pray you will not neglect. I said you will not neglect. Look at chapter 19 of Genesis. I'm reading from verse 12. And the man, that means the angel, said unto Lord, As thou hear any besides son-in-law, thy sons and thy daughters, or whatsoever thou hast in this city, bring them out of this place. It's not for entertainment. Bring them out of this place. You don't have extra time to waste right now. Bring them out of this place. Come out of sin. Come out of Sodom. Come out of Sodomy. Come out from among the Sodomites and come out from fornication and come out from that adultery and come out from that crime and come out from your evil way. It says in verse 13, for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is what's in great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lord went out and he spake unto his son, saying, Lord, which married his daughters and said, Up, oh, get you out of this place for the Lord will destroy the city. But tell me, Read it out aloud. But it seemed as one that mocked unto his sons in law. It was like, that's a joke. Is that you mustn't be serious about that. Is that when did you become a preacher? It's like, did you just had that today? It's like you had a bad dream tonight. It's like, what came on you? Everybody is talking about joy and happiness and merriment and entertainment. Everybody is in a good mood. And you're talking about coming out of this place. Are you joking? They neglected. They heard the word. They will not believe. They will not accept. I pray that everyone here today, you'll accept in Jesus' name. Look at verse 15, verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the angels east in Lord saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of this city. And while he lingered, think about that, he himself was even about neglecting believers. There are believers that are neglecting their salvation. And yet the Lord is saying, Walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And there are people that have heard and they are not taking note of this while he lingered. The men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord be merciful unto him and they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Can you say that with me? Escape for thy life. Can you say that again? Escape. Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee. What does that mean? You know, Lord had settled there. The wife had there. The nightclubs were there. And the houses of merriment were there. And the places of gambling, they were there. And the hot spots of the Sodomites, where they commit Sodomy, they were there. And all the places of crime, they were there. The, way, the places of drinking and dancing, and the places of cinema and the nightclubs, all those things were there. And it says, look not behind thee. The old sin partners were there behind them. That's not the time to consider any old chair, any old sinner, sin partner, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And so they left. And so you are going to escape. Somebody there today, I said you are going to escape. 
Hey, that's the most important thing. If you got healing or didn't achieve judgment, healing is worthless. If you got a money and you don't escape from eternal judgment, all that money will be worthless. If you got land and house and whatever it is on earth, anything you get on earth, Jesus Christ has assured us, what shall you profit you? If you gain the whole world and you lose your own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Look at verse 26. Verse 26, are you there? Tell me what you find in verse 26. If you are there, tell me verse 26. And his wife looked back from behind him. What happened? And she became a pillar of salt. We're coming to Jude. It has only one chapter. It's uh, the last but one book in the New Testament, in the whole Bible. We're looking at Jude here, and I'm reading to you from verse 7. Reading to you from verse 7. They should have escaped. There were people there. They had the message. They should have escaped. But they didn't escape because they didn't take serious the message of the angels. What the angels had said. And in Jude chapter 1 verse 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah. And the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of, tell me, eternal fire. That's what they should have escaped, and they didn't escape. And the Lord Jesus reminded us of that story in Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 32. Let's go back to verse 28. Luke chapter 17, verse 28. It says in verse 28, likewise also, as it was in the days of Lord, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. But Tachi, even though shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Verse 32, everybody read that with me. Verse 32, 1, 2, 3, go. Remember, Lot's wife, she looked back, she became a pillar of salt, and now she's suffering in hellfire. A thousand years have passed, two thousand years have passed, three thousand years have passed, four thousand years have passed, and that woman is still there because she will not take the way of escape. And the opportunity is coming to you today. If you have not taken this way of escape, you will not neglect in Jesus' name. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 11. Jeremiah chapter 11. And I'm reading here from verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 11. Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, and they, and they shall not be able to escape, though they shall cry unto me, I will not hack in unto them. There is a day of salvation, and there is a day of salvation. And if you neglect that day of salvation, then the time comes when you say, Noah, open the door, open the door. The Lord has uh, shut the door and is taking the key away. There is a time of salvation, the time you can call upon the Lord. And if you're a backslider, this is the time you can take the way of salvation. Say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. And the salvation of the Lord will be yours. Because the Lord is saying, therefore, says the Lord, the time is coming, I will bring evil. I'll bring punishment. I'll bring judgment upon them. And they shall not be able to escape. You will escape in Jesus' name. As to take a, as to take advantage of what the Lord is telling us today and what we're receiving today from the hand of the Lord, you'll escape in Jesus' name. In Job chapter eleven, I'm reading from verse twenty. Job chapter eleven, and we're reading from verse twenty. In verse twenty, it says, "For the eyes of the wicked shall fail." You see, the opportunity is there for you to be forgiven and to confess your sin to the Lord and say, "Lord, I'm not going that direction anymore. I will not do that thing anymore. Evil, I remove my hand. Crime, I remove my hand. Backsliding, I remove my hand." But if you don't do that, verse twenty, "But the eyes of the wicked shall fail." And they shall 
not escape and they shall not escape and their hope shall be as the giving up of the goals. Let me show you one man. I hope and I pray you'll not be like this man I'm going to read about now. I said you'll not be like this man I'm going to read about now. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 24. Acts of the Apostles chapter 24 and I'm reading from verse 24. Acts of the Apostles chapter 24 and in verse 24. And after certain days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla which was a joyous and he sent for Paul and heard him concerning faith in Christ. Here is, uh, you know, a highly placed man, a governor actually, and then he himself voluntarily sent for Paul the apostle. He said, I want to hear this word of Christ. I want to hear the salvation in Christ. I want to hear the faith in Christ. He sent for Paul and heard him concerning faith in Christ. Verse 25, and it's risen as Paul the apostle reasoned of righteousness, temperance, judgment to come. Felix trembled and answered, go thy way for this time. When I have convenient time, convenient season, I will call for thee. He never called again. That man was lost. He heard about Christ, he was lost. He heard about the way of salvation, he was lost. He heard of the way of escape, escape from the judgment of God, he was lost. He had about some doctrine and he was lost. Is there anybody there today? You have been coming and coming and coming to this church. You have heard about repentance. Have you repented? Are you going to be lost? If today is going to be like yesterday, if today is going to be like last week, if today is going to be like last year, if today is going to be like any other day, every other day you have come, you have come, you have come, and you never repented, and you never gave your heart to the Lord. Are you never saved? Are you still living in sin? How will you escape if you neglect so great salvation? I pray God will have mercy on you. Look at Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. There are people that substitute outward righteousness. I don't wear this. I don't tie this. I don't, uh, you know, do the other. I don't drink this. I don't have this other thing. Uh, I, that's what they think will get them to heaven. Look at this in Matthew chapter 23. And I'm reading from verse 25. Uh, it says, I want to use scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye may clean the outside of the car and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Ye blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and the platter and the outside of them, that the outside of them may be clean also. Won't ye scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For ye are like unto whitest sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. The people that look nice on the outside, but internally evil thoughts, corrupt thoughts, adulterous thoughts, fornication thoughts, and all the defiling thoughts in them. And it says on the outside, brother, brother, but you know you are not a brother inside you. On the outside, sister, sister, but you're not, you know you are not a sister. On the inside, you're always there. And people are saying, go and do this, and go and do this, and go and do that. But you know that inside, you are rotting. Look at verse 28. Even so, you also outward, outwardly appear on the righteous unto men. But within are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Verse 33, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape? You see what Jesus is saying? You have heard it all. You know it all. You know where the verses are. And you know the word of God. You know there's a way of escape. There's a way of salvation. The way of salvation. But you are not taking that way. It says, you serpents. Who are the serpents? Those are the serpents that go in the grass. You cannot tell. You cannot even see them. And they sneak their way here. And they sneak their way there. And they sneak into a glamping place. And they sneak into places. They are playing lottery. And they sneak into places. They are committing those abominable things. They are like serpents. And they are vipers. They have poison inside them. How can you escape the damnation of hell? I pray today will be the day of escape for you. I said it will be the day of escape for you. 
You'll escape. Where are you? I said you'll escape. Judgment will not come upon you in Jesus' name. If you will take the advantage and call upon the name of the Lord, any hidden sin there, anything you are hiding there, you confess them, you vomit them out, and say bye-bye, never will I go back to them anymore. Salvation will come to you today in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 25. Hebrews chapter 12, we're looking at verse 25. Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25, see that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escaped not, who refused him that spake on earth? Think about that. They escaped not. Those who refused him that spake on earth. Moses spoke to Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. They refused. They perished. And uh, the Lord himself spoke to Balaam. He refused. He perished. And think about all the people you have known that heard the word of God. And think about those of us here. And every Sunday you come, every Monday when you come, and every time we have the chance of speaking the word of God to you, we don't bring to any other scene. We don't entertain you. We go to the word straight, and we have given you the word of salvation and the word of holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You have heard, have you accepted? Have you believed? Have you received? As it touched your life, seen, uh, see that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they, if they escape not, those who refused that spake on earth, how much more, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now. He has promised, as he has promised, saying, Yet once more, I will shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And then he goes on to say, and this word yet, once more, signifies the, the removing of those things which are shaking, as of the things which are made, that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved. I'll be there. I said, I'll be there. You'll be there in Jesus' name. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Verse 29, everybody, one, two, three, go. This is the New Testament God, everybody, once again. There's a God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth shall not perish but have everlasting life. But if you refuse, everybody, verse 29. This is a God who has sent, he has sent prophets to us, he has sent preachers to us, he has sent them. It may be your father is a preacher, maybe your mother is a preacher, maybe your children are preachers, and maybe you have me, you have the opportunity, and you are hearing me every time. You hear me directly, you hear me on the internet, and you hear me in every other place, and yet you reject. And yet you refuse. And yet you are not paying attention to the word you are hearing. Verse 29, everybody, one, two, three, go. My God is a consuming of fire. And the Lord is one in every one that will not reject because the negligent will suffer forever and ever. Neglect is a great destroyer. A person doesn't have to commit great sins, uh, any of sins to be lost. Neglect is enough to make him perish. A backslider does not have to throw the Bible away. You can keep your Bible. You can hold on to the Bible. A backslider does not have to run away from the church. He can keep upon coming to the church, but if he neglects repentance, he neglects restoration, he will eventually seal his doom. A church member does not have to quit coming to the church. He does not have to say, I don't accept, I don't receive the word of holiness, only neglect, neglect holiness and you will not see the Lord on the final day. The Lord is saying, great salvation has been offered unto us. He 
says repent, it says believe, it says receive, and that salvation will be yours in Jesus' name. I'm coming to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 2. From verse 2, it says, For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? So great salvation. When we have that salvation, how can we tell? When we have that salvation, what's the evidence in our lives? Point number three now, the normal evidence of eternal salvation. The normal evidence of eternal salvation. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? But you said eternal salvation. Yes, that's what the Bible says. Look at Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9. It says, be made perfect. That's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ who suffered for us. He became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Jesus said repent, they obeyed, they repented. Jesus said believe, and they obeyed, and they believed. Jesus said take the word, live by the word. Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. And they obeyed, and they said yes Lord, I repent, yes Lord, I believe. And they take the word of God to heart, and he says, it becomes the author of eternal salvation unto them. Actually, that's what he came to do here on earth. Yes, he healed, but that's not what he really came to do. Yes, he delivered from oppression. That's not what he really came to do. He walked on the water. That was not the main scene. And then he fed the 5,000 people. That's not the main scene. What's the main scene Jesus Christ came to do? He came to give us the great salvation. That great salvation is coming to you today. I said the great salvation is coming to you today. Look at Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth his son, and thou shalt call his name, shout the name, Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. He shall save his people from their sins. In Luke chapter, chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 8. Luke chapter 19, verse 8, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my goods I give unto the poor. When salvation comes, it will change you. It will transform you. If you were stingy before, now you will be generous. If you were self-centered before, you'll be thinking about others now. If any man be in Christ, as a new creature. Old things are passed away. Old habits are passed away. Old stinginess has passed away. Old wickedness and passed away. And behold, all things have become new. And he said, of my goods I give unto the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation. What do I do? I said, what do I do? I restore him fourfold. If you are really converted, we don't need a, you know, a great sermon on this. You stole a car and you know you stole that car and they lodged the complaint to the police station and they're looking for the car and you managed to change the plate number and everything and you're driving it all about and then you say, I'm saved. My sins are forgiven. I don't like sin anymore. I don't love sin anymore. And then you got into that vehicle and you're still driving about. No, you are not saved. Don't deceive yourself. How will you escape the damnation of hell? It's saying, when you are really saved, you hate what you used to love and the things you have stolen voluntarily by yourself. You want to restore them. And the lies you have told, you want to correct them. And Zacchaeus, having the salvation of the Lord, he said, if I take anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, this day is, what is that? I said, what is that? This is salvation. Salvation makes a great change in a man's life, in a woman's life. This day is salvation come to this house for as much, for so much as he also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. 
That's why he came. You see, when you come to the Lord, when the word of God comes to you, it will make you sorrowful about your sin. It will make you want to repent of your sin. Turn away from your sin and come to the Lord. It will make you to want to turn away from defilement and death and dirt so that your heart now will be clean. Your mind now will be clean. Second Corinthians chapter 7. In Second Corinthians chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 10. For godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation. Godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation. Entertainment does not lead to salvation. Rejoicing about your sin does not lead to salvation. Covering up your sin does not lead to salvation. Say, excusing your sin does not lead to salvation. It says, for godly sorrow walketh repentance to salvation. Not to be repented of, not to be regretted of, but the sorrow of the world walketh death. That salvation is here today. And the Lord will grant it to everyone in Jesus' name. As you believe and then you turn away from everything and turn to the Lord, salvation will be yours. I say salvation will be yours. Don't push that salvation to other people and say, okay, he's talking to them, he's talking to them. Salvation is yours today in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, we're looking at verse 9. Romans chapter 10, we're looking at it from verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, tell me, Tell me. If you believe that, tell me out aloud. Thou shalt be saved. Salvation has come. I said salvation has come. How do we get that salvation? Look at that verse 9 once more. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. You know, your father will not confess for you. Your mommy will not confess for you. Your children will not confess for you. Your wife will not confess with your mouth. With your mouth. The pastor will not confess for you with your mouth. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth. Or the Lord Jesus. You confess the Lordship of Jesus. Self had been your Lord. I reject that. Satan has been your Lord. I I reject that sin has been your Lord. I reject that the flesh has been your Lord. I reject that money has been your Lord. I reject that society has been your Lord. I reject that I come under the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is my Savior? Is my Lord? Is my Master? Is my Director? Is my Guide? Is my Teacher? Is my Instructor? I give my whole life unto Him. I surrender unto Him that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lordship of jesus and shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved you'll be saved today you'll be saved for all eternity you'll be saved from sin you'll be saved from satan you'll be saved from self you'll be saved from all the consequences of sin in jesus name for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness if you believe from the death of your heart Christ is mine. Christ died for me and he gave himself for me from with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When is the day of salvation? I said when is the time of salvation? I said when is the moment of salvation? When will the Lord save? Whoever wants to be saved, when is the time the Lord will save? Right now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, in verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, behold, somebody there tell me, now is the accepted time. Behold, somebody shout it out. Now is the day of salvation. And it is great salvation. Great salvation is coming to you. A glorious salvation is coming to you. Why is he called the great salvation? Number one, because the author is great. The author of eternal salvation is a great savior. 
He offered a great sacrifice. It's a great substitute. That's why it is great salvation. Why is it called great salvation? Because it saves from great sins, from all sins in a moment of time. All the sins you have ever committed, they may, they may pile up to the sky in a moment of time when you say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the hand of Christ will come and will take all those sins away one by one. Everything will be totally clear the way salvation will come. Great salvation will come. Why is he called great salvation? Because number three, it says from great eternal damnation and from great suffering. Suffering on earth, suffering in hell for all eternity, thousands and thousands of years. It is this salvation that will take that great suffering away from you. That's why it is called great salvation. Why is he great salvation? Number four, it is great salvation because it brings you a great transformation, a great transformation that somebody will see you and say it's him no it's not him because now the darkness is vanished away the oppression is vanished away and all the sins have gone away you become righteous you become clean you become holy your language changes and your sight changes and the things you used to touch you touch them no more the places you used to go you go there no more there's a great transformation that's why it's called great salvation why is he called great salvation? Because it grants us great power for lifetime of victory. The things that seek to overcome you, you will overcome them. And from today, as you have this great salvation, you'll have victory. Brother Victor, where are you? Sister Victoria, where are you? Salvation will bring victory to your life in Jesus' name. Number six, it exalts us to a great place in heaven, a great position in heaven, a great possession in heaven. It gives us eternal, infinite happiness and honors and a great crown. That's why it's called a great salvation. Number seven, it manifests the great love of God and it makes us sons and daughters of the great father of the most Hi, God. You see, there are people on such a day like this, when they come to the presence of God, they are asking for toys. Give me this, and give me this, and give me this. But you know salvation? Salvation is like a great kind of box. And you have 100 blessings there, 100% of blessings there. Any other thing you need, asking for this, asking for this, asking for this, all that is incorporated in that salvation. When you have salvation, a healing will follow. When you have salvation, jobs will follow. When you have salvation, deliverance will follow. You have salvation, the great salvation. Every other sin will follow. That's why don't bother yourself about I'm asking for this, I'm asking for this, I'm asking for that. Don't ask for toys, perishable toys, but instead come to the Lord today and say, Lord, I want this great salvation. If you reject, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? But if you come and say, Lord, I receive. Lord, I I receive. The salvation is mine. Then your name will enter the book of life. And when the name is called up yonder, you will hear your name. Yeah. I said you will hear your name. Yeah. Where are you? I said you will hear your name. Yeah. And then when the saints go marching to heaven, sinners will not march with them. Unbelievers will not march with them. When saints go marching to heaven, thank God I'll be there. I said, thank God I'll be there. If you're going to be there, what are you there? Stand up and tell them, thank God I'll be there. If you've got this great salvation, why don't you praise God? I have the great salvation. If you don't have it yet, why don't you make this day, this day, the day of that great salvation? And it's coming your way right now. Great salvation, great salvation, great salvation. Ask and shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Whosoever shall come on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the time, and this is the day of salvation. Ask, and get saved before you go.